Hey YouTube, it's me, King Nazaru. Here with a review of uh, Rosario Vampires chapter 21 through 23. Tell you right now, things got really ugly in this these three chapters. I uh, say this shit got real. It's a bit of an understatement. I'm not entirely sure if I should even do jokes. Uh, but you won't take my word for it. Let's get started. Uh, in chapter 21, well, we start off in an abandoned ca uh, campus building, and we see Saiza is being pummeled very badly, uh, being with an inch of his life by his fellow outcast monster members. Uh, they are pissed that he lost a uh, to Skune, since it hurts their image, uh, about how they're trying to, uh, prove that they're better than pure blood monsters. Yeah. Which, if they knew that Skune was actually human, would actually make the things worse. Uh, and to top it all off, uh, Saizo also got some of his members, uh, hurt during that battle. So, things are not looking well. Saizo asks for forgiveness, but Midao, the leader of the uh, outcast gang, uh, says losing is for unforgivable in this group. Uh, it's further going on that the problem of recruiting uh, hybrid monsters is there are too many weak ones, and they need s strong ones to take on the pure-blooded monsters. So, uh, feeling that Saizo is nothing but trash, he gives the order to kill Saizo, and Saizo is finally beaten to death. Real heavy way to start a chapter. Then, Mido orders the others to not tell the superiors uh, about Saizo's failure, uh, and that he will personally take care of the uh, Skune matter. In the, uh, elsewhere in the newspaper club, Kurumu asks what happened to Skune since he has a bandage over his neck. Uh, Skune uh, confesses that uh, he was attacked by the outcast group, uh, but Kurumu shouldn't worry. Uh, Kurumu worries about uh, Skune's neck, which has the has the bite marks left by Mocha uh, due to constant feeding and injecting of blood. Uh, which, um, which, talking about the outcast group, leads Skune to telling Yukari that he managed to beat Saizou and some of the outcast members with the help of Mocha's blood. Uh, however, Yukari explains that the outcast gang is a group of hybrid monsters who look down on purebred monsters and making them your enemy is pretty much a bad thing, especially since there, uh, since there are more of them appearing, which, uh, which gives us a bit of an insight to how, I mean, how monsters socialize with each other. There are some monsters that go against tradition and uh, have interspecies relationships, <sighs> which brings up. The question: How this? Uh, if there's if that's a common thing, then how come there aren't? Uh, how, the, how come hybrid monsters aren't being more tolerated? Yeah, I know that there's a bit of elitism to it, but still. Uh, but regardless, uh, Skune and Mocha start relenting the that they made the decision to. Uh, have the outcast gang as their enemies, uh, which leads, and hearing this makes Kurumu furious that Mocha didn't tell uh, any of them that Skinny was hurt as soon as possible. Uh, Kurumu goes on further by saying that she wouldn't be able to bear Skune getting hurt, and starts rubbing her large breasts upon him to comfort. Well, we already made Kurumu joke, so there's no point in going there. Uh, and we also learn that 
uh, from behind the wall that Misere was watching be uh, right behind the wall and behind the wi window and says that it's a pity that Skinny got hurt, especially since she saw Skinny fight herself. I'm not sure if I said this or not, but uh, uh, for those wondering why Misere didn't help uh, Skinny fight, uh, that that gets explained later and I don't want to ruin it. So, uh, while walking on campus, Mokens asks Skune to confess that the bite mark on his neck hasn't healed yet. Uh, but Skune constantly lies that he's fine, uh, but Mokka doesn't seem to be buying it. Mokka tells, uh, that, tells him that repeated injecting her blood into him uh, may be having an adverse effect on him. Uh, Skinny keeps uh, saying he's fine though, uh, which forces Mocha to try to see his neck. But Skinny shoves Mocha away and says, and no, not says, practically, practically yells uh, at her that whatever happens to his body isn't Mocha's concern. Oh, that's going to come back to bite him in the ass. And as Skune walks away, the outcast monsters uh, watch him, and a couple of them are baffled on how someone as weak-looking as Skune could, uh, could have the power of a vampire. But Midao confirms it since he actually watched Saizou's fight with Skune. And we see that Midao hates vampires more than any other purebred monster because they are the ultimate elitist. They think they're better than every other monster. So, uh, Mocha talks to, uh, Inamoka in her rosary, uh, she asking her for advice on what's happening to Skinny. Uh, Inamoka tries to explain that it's her fault for Skinny's condition, but Mocha senses that the, uh, that they're in danger and uh, Adamoka uh, is kidnapped by the Outcast gang. Uh, the next day, the newspaper club notices Mocha is missing and hasn't attended any of her classes. Uh, Skinny starts to blame himself and thinks that Mocha is uh, mad at him for what he said. Uh, Kurumu tells uh, how she was uh, stuck by uh, she talked to Gen about the Outcast gang, while Gen tries to uh, grab Kuruma's breast. Okay, one joke. Our hero, everyone. Uh, Gen says there's a dangerous group that refuses to. I mean that the Outcast gang is a dangerous group that refuses to lose to uh, anyone because they're trying to make a name for themselves and have re been recruiting uh, rather dangerous and powerful hybrid monsters. And they are so dangerous that even the safety commission uh, is uh, puts them as high profile criminals. So when you you get your enemies to the public safety commission, you know you're a force to be reckoned with. So Gin uh, says that that uh, she and the rest of the gang should avoid the uh, outcast gang while still trying to grab Kuruma's bruise. We already made the Our Hero joke, so let's go with that. Uh, and that, and uh, in a side note, that also explains how Kuruma's uh, hand is uh, is wounded up to the point where she needs a bandage. Uh, Oh, Kurumu still sensing that Skinny's neck uh, is hurt. Uh, she blows on it, uh, which causes Skinny to cringe a bit. Uh, Kurumu asks if anything happened between him and Mocha since Skinny keeps holding his head to the sky uh, just to keep the uh, keep his neck from hurting, and uh, also wonders if Mocha is hiding things. Uh, and Skune wants to know how Kurumu could possibly think that, and Kurumu says that she deduced that 
uh, it has to do with the net, and that Mocha must blame herself for whatever is happening. And it's basically women's intuition. Now I'm going to stop a moment and talk about how I love how the manga portrays Kurumu. Where she's not just the breast woman as she was in the anime. Yes, the anime butchered a lot of things in the manga. Even it practically ignored things. Uh, but she's also intelligent, uh, very cunning, uh, very loyal, and as we'll later see, that she she has the capabilities to be like a leader to the group, or uh, like a second in command when Monk is not around. So that's part of my reason why I want the anime to reboot to get rebooted, so it'll follow the manga closer. So back to set manga. Uh, Kurumu tries to, uh, feels that this is her opportunity to seduce Skune by saying she'd never, uh, hurt him like Mogu would, but Skune feels it's so written with guilt that he, uh, realizes that Mogu was asking about his neck because she blames herself for his pain and tries to run off to meet Mogu and apologize. Uh, much too... Uh, much to Kurumu's annoyance about that. So, Ms. Kune runs off to apologize to Mocha at her dormitory, but is confronted by the Outcast gang, where Mido, uh tells Kune if he wants to see Mocha again, he needs to come with them. And again, Mizure is watching this from afar. Now, trust me, I, I, I promise you, there's a legitimate explanation for why Mizre isn't fighting. Uh, so, where were we? Alright, Skune is t taken to the hideout, which is the abandoned campus, and doesn't like the fact that he won't be able to call for help, since, uh, the campus is miles away from the, from the actual building. Where, every, where all the school students are. So, uh, Mo Mocha tries to warn Skune uh, that it's a trap, naturally. Uh, but Midao bitch slaps Skune before he could do anything. Uh, Midao says that he needs to need Skune to fight to save Mocha. I mean, mean, I mean that Midao says that if Skune wants to save Mocha, he needs to fight him. And, uh, he refers to Skune as a vampire because that's how he, that's how he was when he first saw Skune fight. And he expresses his hatredness towards vampires for their superiority complex. And that this fight is not just about protecting their reputation, but also proving that hybrids are better than, uh, purebred monsters. So, beginning the battle, Midal transforms into a hybrid form, which kind of looks like a cross between Ultimate Green Goblin, if you read the Spider-Man comics, I mean comics, and uh, for any Yasha fans, there's also a bit parts of him that look like they came from Naraku's final vert form. And the fight starts to cause a lot of destruction throughout the base. Um, Mocha says that Midao's true opponent uh, is not, in fact, Skune, but her, because uh, she tries to claim that Skune is not, in fact, a vampire, and that he, uh, everything that Skune's done is her fault, and she should be punished for uh, for whatever grievances uh, Midao has against him. Uh, Midao starts believing starts believing this, especially considering what Sizel said, and that Mocha is the actual vampire, and that Skune, he's, uh, Skune is probably just some kind of lesser familiar, uh, which is basically someone who, uh, someone a vampire keeps around as a servant, and in, in exchange they'll make him a vampire later. Uh, 
But Skune uh, shouts that it's not Mocha's fault because uh, without her, he would have been dead long ago. And that's no joke. He would have been dead from the first chapter if it wasn't for Mocha. Uh, Skune briefly goes uh, from human mode to vampire mode, which uh, which really shows the severity of how of how far gone he is from his human. Con I mean, from his humanity, if he can enter uh, his vampire state without Mugga's blood. Uh, and while doing this, he uh, manages to remove Mugga's rosary at quick speed, and thus Mugga turns into inner Mugga. Uh, naturally, inner Mugga is able to defeat Mida with his sin with her single kick and tells him that he's trash that that he's trash and that he doesn't deserve to uh, uh that he doesn't deserve to touch her and that like she says to all her opponents they need to learn their place but, but there's a little bit of a surprise in the next chapter and here's where things get from from bad to worse. Inamoka says that Skune's words have made her heart feel lighter, but that could also be dangerous. And uh, she decides to tell him uh, what will happen to his body. And Skune seems happy about this because he'll, she thinks there's an actual solution to this and that whatever's, whatever's going on is just uh, something that will uh, seem like a small symptom and just pass over time, but as the next chapter, as the next chapter details, that's not the case. In chapter 22, Inamoka asks if Skinny is actually prepared to learn what danger his body is in after being injected with vampiric blood so many times. Yeah, that bright eyes are gone now. So. And while this is happening, the Outcast gang is awed that someone could take out their boss in a single hit. Inamoka uh, explains that Skuni's body has reached its limit. Uh, his, uh, the vampire, uh, I mean the vampiric blood, uh, is causing his body to break apart. And if she continues to give him her blood, uh, there's a strong possibility that he could die. So, Skune is a bit shocked that he could possibly die, somewhat skeptical, thinking that, uh, think, thinking that Mocha's just joking, but, uh, she's completely serious. And, uh, but he's denying this also because that, uh, that if that were the case, he would have to leave the school and thus never see any of his friends again, which Mocha does imply. Uh, Inamoka goes on to say that, uh, whatever his decision, she'll seem, she'll be indifferent towards it because she claims to not care about Skune the same way as Mocha does, which we can all tell that she's lying, because, as her statement last said, that her heart felt lighter because of Skune's actions and words, so she does care about Skune, but is just too proud to admit it. Then... Uh, for the first time, we've seen an enemy do, besides, uh, besides Kuyo, and, uh, and Ruby's master, Midao suddenly rises from the rubble and tries to retaliate against Mocha. So this, actually, we actually have our first opponent who can actually take a hit from Mocha and keep back swinging. What makes this difference is like unlike Kuyo, uh, he's Midao is actually fighting a fully powered inner Mocha, whereas uh, Kuyo fought a weakened version of Mocha. Uh, Midao gives uh, inner Mocha a punch in the ribs, but uh, she barely uh, she barely blocks it. Knows that that despite 
having a lot of openings to, I mean, towards his attacks. He's, um, his power is quite formidable. Irimoka tells Skune to keep away from Midao's attacks and that she'll handle him. Uh, back at the school, Kurumu tells uh, Yukari that she thought she heard an earthquake when uh, when the battle was occurring at the campus. Uh, and she has a bad feeling about this. <coughs> uh, then Kurumu hears a voice uh, coming not too far off, and uh, the person is calling Kurumu uh, Big Breast Girl. And it turns out to be Misere. Uh, she tells, uh, Misere tells, uh, Kurumu and Yukri that she needs their strength. And she, the conversation also includes her assuming that Kurumu and Yukri are a couple. Okay. So, Kurumu and Yukri start arguing how they do not trust Misere because of what she did when they first met her. And... Also, that she's a stalker, and even going further to say that they aren't a couple; they practically are attack, have an antagonistic, I mean, antagonistic relationship to some extent. Uh, but Misery uh, decides she's not going to have any of that nonsense and freezes them uh, so she can explain what's happening. Misery tells uh, them that Skinny was captured by the Outcast gang, and she couldn't save them. Because uh, there were too many of too many of those monsters, and they looked like cold-hearted killers. Now, that that's not the exact explanation I was t telling you to wait for, but that that also justifies. It. So uh, back to the uh, campus, uh, when Midas slammed the ground, uh, one of his shards uh, uh, hit Skuna in the back. Uh, Inamoka called Skune a fool for trying to save her for, uh, since she didn't need his help and her blood, uh, won't heal him this time since his body is in a critical condition. Uh, Mida looks like some of his other, like uh, some of other Skune's opponents, uh, expresses disappointment by Skune's lack of fighting in the battle. Uh... Inamoka tells Skuni to stay put this time uh, so she can defeat Midao quickly and get him proper treatment. Midao realizes that uh, Inamoka is, in fact, a true, is in fact a true vampire. And, as I said before, he believes that Skuni must be a burdening familiar. And even goes so far as to recommend that she get rid of him since he's just holding her back. Uh... But this really, really gets under Inamoka's skin, and she starts moving in blinding speed, something similar to how you would see in Dragon Ball Z Kai, and uh, gives Midao another kick, kick and tells him to never insult Skune, uh, since they had to resort to underhanded tricks, uh, which make them no better than a weakling. Uh, the outcast gang who uh, continue to be intimidated by Inamoka's power and they said that maybe it's time we unleash the secret weapon. So, Midao gets up a second time. Really, really above Cleo. Uh, I'm not sure how he uh, how he compares to Yakata, though. But, uh, so, as he, so as I was saying, Midao gets up a second time, and he figure out, figures out that the reason vampires are so strong is because they convert their monstrous aura into power. And for non, I mean, for common monsters and other people, uh, a blow from a vampire is, is guaranteed to be lethal. Um... Midao notes that uh, vampires may be the monsters with the most power, but they're also with the ones with the most weaknesses, such as the Holy Cross, uh, silver bullets, yes, silver bullets work on vampires too, 
uh, sunlight, etc. And uh, one of their greatest weaknesses out of all of them uh, turns out to be water, which harkens back to the third chapter, how Mucka explained that uh, vampires can't be around water unless it's uh, been uh, been tainted with uh, special herbs. So, uh, in a, so being doused in uh, water from the from the from the ceilings, uh, Intermilk, this causes Intermilk to be paralyzed, and Meadow takes advantage of this by uh, constantly punching her. Uh, Skinny tries to offer uh, uh, Mocha help, but Inner Mocha refuses, uh, saying she doesn't want anyone to help even if she's on the verge of death, and that Skinny isn't necessary to her, unlike the other Mocha. Uh, which, which is a really low blow to Skune. Midao says Inamoka is being rather harsh on Skune, and, and that it's that kind of pride is is what makes him hate vampires more than any other purebred monster. Midao uh, uh, tries to punch Mocha one more time, but uh, he he is uh, punches blocked by Skune's shoulder. Uh, when he's in vampire mode. Uh, however, uh, Inamoka notes that Skuni's shoulder blade uh, just came came completely shattered after that hit, and asks why would he bother defending her when he when his body is so damaged. And Skuni, uh, instead of answering that question, asks for Inamoka's blood, but she she insists that she can't do that because it's too dangerous. Uh -huh. So, uh, Inamoka says that she's been pushing Skuni away because, uh, not because she didn't value him, but it's quite the opposite. She didn't want to see him die. But, uh, she she realizes that the situation has gotten out of hand, and the only way to save Skune now is to take a leap of faith and inject her blood into Skune. But something turns out to be wrong since she can't feel the transformation happening, and she feels uh, like she's about to pass out. And when she does, Skune uh, gains a new transformation which startles everyone. So, uh, and while Inamoka is still ho holding on to her consciousness, uh, says that uh, this isn't supposed to be the transformation Skune was supposed to go into. So this is definitely not a vampiric form. Uh, Vidal, however, is eager to fight Skune since he has a bit of bloodlust in him. So, now we cut to chapter 23. Uh, Misere is leading Kurumu and Yukri to the abandoned campus. Uh, and at the campus, we see Skune's uh, body beginning to heal as his back pops out the shard uh, that came from Midao's body and continues to further regenerate, uh, much to Midao's confusion. Uh, considering that he thought that such a blow could be lethal to him. Yeah. And the monk is kind of relieved that Skune is is actually healing himself, but is confused that Skune's body is recovering instead of breaking down. So she's one, so she knows that he's not going to die, but is that actually something better? Uh... So Midao asks, how could Skune uh, could have a vamp powers of a vampire? No, no, wait. So, what, it occurs to Midao that uh, Skune is not affected by the dousing water from the ceiling, and he wonders, how could someone possibly have the powers of a vampire, but not be affected by water? 
And he feels that if Skune has has some immunities to uh, some of the vampire's weaknesses, that must mean he must be a really strong opponent. And that makes him more eager to fight Skune. Since if he beats him, that'll really show that they're better than the uh, purebreds. Uh, so, Inamoka... I mean, but Inamoka warns Midao not to attack Skune because there's something wrong with him. But before Skune... I mean, before Inamoka's... Can, uh... Inamoka's advice can be heeded, uh, Skune already delivers him a stomach punch. No, I'm not gonna do a DBZ a bridge joke this time. It's too dark a scene. Uh, very heavy blow. So, Kurumu, Mizure, and Yukri arrive just in time to see that uh, Skune has beaten Mido. Uh, Mido is very wounded, uh, blood coming from his jaw, and Skune is holding him like he's a freaking rag doll. Uh, Yukri uh, tries to sc stop the uh, water from pouring, and Kurumu asks why Skune isn't affected by the water. Uh, to which Inamoka says that it's the worst case scenario about blood transference. Uh, Skune uh, is not apparently not finished with Midao and continues to pummel him, much to, and the being is so severe that everybody is shocked and horrified by it. Uh, and it's also this also violent act is actually give, making Skinny give off a sadistic grin. <clears throat> so, uh, the gang asks uh, someone to stop Skinny before he ki kills Midao, but nobody uh, is actually stepping up to do it. So they have, so they feel that they need to save the boss himself. Uh, but Skinny easily easily swats them off like they were a bunch of flies and then starts to beat them as well which causing Kurumu to become teary-eyed by Skune's new fi newfound violent behavior uh, uh, Inamoka finally explains what's happening by saying that uh, Skune's fragile state has caused his mind to uh, give in to the Vamp vampiric blood, and and also knows that because vampires are a warlike creature, I mean warlike creatures who crave for uh, fighting, he uh, has become a ghoul, uh, uh, which is basically uh, a berserk killing machine version of a vampire. Uh, Yukri suddenly. Uh, manages to, I mean, successfully manages to turn off the water, and Inamoka finds the strength to move again. Uh, and says that it was this worst case scenario uh, that made Inamoka uh, tell Skune that he should return back to the human world. And while Skune is fighting the Outcast gang, Inamoka comes up to him and gives him a hard kick, kick to the head, which shocks everybody. So Inamoka says that there's no other way to save Skune uh, except by except by killing him. And she does as much as she doesn't want to do it, it has to be done, and she begs him for her forgiveness. I mean, begs her for his forgiveness. Uh, it's already, we're not even done yet, it's already getting heavy. And meanwhile, uh, the headmaster, headmaster at the school, uh, known as the Exorcist, senses that Skune has in fact become a ghoul, and, uh, that Inamoka is fighting him, and that normally, uh, that would be the thing to do, because, uh, because once a person becomes a ghoul, they can never be returned to normal, and they'll just be a blind killing machine that 
that will kill, destroy anything in their path. Uh, back at the fight, uh, Skinny is barely dodging uh, and blocking all of Mocha's attacks. And we, just for the first time, we've actually see her punch. <clears throat> since she normally relies on kicking. Uh, Inner Mocha says that the reason Skinny uh, being is able to dodge and block uh, her attacks is because uh, the water has still weakened her to, ex to an extent. And the reason that Skinny wasn't affected by the water was because uh, he wasn't born a vampire. He was made into one. And if she doesn't give him if she doesn't get her full strength back and go all out on him, uh, he'll probably, you know, it's most likely that he'll kill her before she gets the chance. Uh, Kurumu, uh, mortified by this, says that she doesn't, uh, want Inamoka to kill Skune. Uh, Inamoka says that Skune isn't, there's no point in this because Skune is technically dead. Uh, since he was being consumed by the blood, and ha and being turned into a ghoul who kills and eats anything in his path, uh, and because uh, it was Inamoka's blood that caused him to, do, to become like this, it's her responsibility to put him down. Uh, but Kurumu, it still s still wants to defend her. Skune stands her ground between. Uh, him and Inamoka, and states that she considers the girls and Skinnies to be her closest friends, and that she and the rest of the rest are prepared to fight Inamoka if she intends to harm him. And both Skinny and Inamoka are, are shocked by this, so because she knows that, I mean Inamoka knows that none of these girls are powerful enough to take her on, take her on, uh, but it's still co a commendable effort. Uh, however, Skuni gets out of the shock and swipes swipes through an unexpected Kurumu's stomach, uh, which is which. Fortunately, she's lucky that she's a succubus, because I'm pretty sure that would have killed killed her if that wasn't the case. Uh, and we can see just how how twisted Skuni's mind has become when he's in, in his go form, as he constantly keeps saying kill, uh, confirming what Inamoka was saying about the form. Uh, Inamoka continues to deliver a, a hard punch in, uh, at Skune's face, then proceeds to beat down on him. Kurumu, tr Kurumu tries to get up, but she's lost, but Yukri says that she's lost too much blood to do anything. Uh, then we, uh, into Inamoka's uh, monologue, I mean, into Mo Inamoka's thoughts, and she's telling herself that she didn't wish uh, this fate on Skune, and confirming what I said earlier that she does actually care about Skune, but she's just too proud to admit it. She says that uh, instead of this happening, she wanted to spend more time with him. Uh, so, uh, Inamoka is still beating on Skune very badly. Uh, Skune is barely able to stand up and hold his ground. Uh, and the girls are constantly, uh, constantly frightened and saddened by this, by each blow given delivered to Skune. It's really savage. I, you really have to see how, just how brutal this fight is. Uh, uh, but fortunately, uh, Mocha is suddenly restrained by uh, tendrils, and the tendrils come from the exorcist's assistant. Uh, then the exorcist confronts Skune and uses his own rosary uh, after doing a Christian chant then places it on Skune after reciting the holy phrases. Uh, which causes Skune to go out of his go out of his go form and become unconscious. And so the girls, uh, wondering who are these people, 
and when they suddenly recognize that it's the headmaster and who's the other person, and it turns out that the uh, assistant is none other than Ruby Tojo, who says that she's returning a favor for what they uh, for helping her at Witch Ranch. Uh, yeah, yeah. This these three chapters were really good, really brutal. Uh, it really shows the tone of how it's going from the traditional harem style, where it's mostly about love and conflicting relationships, to how their reaction—I mean, their actions—are having deep consequences, and actually have to take responsibility for that. And we're actually seeing just how how much of a threat the Outcast gang are, since one of them is actually able to go toe to toe with Mocha, and as bad as he was, there are monsters stronger than he. I mean, than him. And we actually see the consequences of what Scooney is about to become a ghoul, and. So, this set also sets up the tone that, from now on, uh, these chapters are going to get really, really dark. Eh, but fortunately, there's, fortunately, we do get to see that, uh, that despite how bad, bad the, uh, fighting was, I mean, not bad, just how severe it was, that, uh, they didn't have to go as far as they need to because uh, Ruby and the exorcist managed to save Skune. Well, so that me obviously means that he's aware of uh, Skune's, con I mean, Skune's condition and how it can be handled besides violent force. So, uh, next chapter, we'll see just what uh, what the exorcist's plans are for Skune.